May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. This past week, I found myself bound in heart and mind and spirit to a varied group of individuals most of whom I had never even met. Their names, in no particular order, John Mahoney, Fanny Lou Hamer, Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker, Michelle Goh. Perhaps some of these names are familiar to you as well. Of course, John Mahoney, was a long and beloved St. Paul's parishioner who died last week and whose funeral we celebrated yesterday morning. Fannie Lou Hamer was a fierce civil rights activist and theologian. I attended a lecture on Wednesday about her life and witness as part of an interfaith clergy gathering. Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker is the rabbi of Congregational Congregation Beth Israel Synagogue in Colleyville, Texas. Last week, an armed man held him and members of his congregation hostage in the latest grotesque demonstration of anti-Semitism. Michelle Goh was an Asian woman pushed in front of a subway train in New York City. This week reminded me of the ways in which I am connected to people simply because we are all beloved children of a loving God. Though I do not know Rabbi Citron Walker, my heart immediately went to my dear friends and colleagues who are rabbis and to their communities. Though I did not know Michelle Goh, my heart went to the many people I know and love who are of Asian descent. I did know John, as many of you did, and my heart went to his wife Arlene, to their daughters, to their family and friends. It was a week in which I was made painfully aware that Because I try and choose to follow the way of love, my heart is always vulnerable to the pains and sufferings of others, no matter how well I know them, if I even know them at all. Because we are connected by the God who loves us all, what happened in Texas or on a subway platform in New York, or in a family in our own community, doesn't just happen in Texas, or in New York, or just in that family. Living with an open heart means giving up control over who or what might get in, who or what might just break it and who or what might have the capacity to heal it, to love, and then to break and to heal all over again. A clergy colleague of mine remarked this week that she had noticed that people were increasingly feeling done with one another. I just can't with that person anymore, is heard more often. People are quicker to argue, quicker to offend, quicker to break off relationship. And I think that makes a lot of sense. We are living in a time when compassion fatigue is a real thing. And the pain and the grief we are all carrying from this seemingly endless exposure to suffering when it is not named, when it is not lifted up and allowed, it very quickly masks itself as anger, frustration, 
betrayal, and hate. So these KN95s are not the only masks we are wearing. When Fannie Lou Hamer was in jail and being repeatedly abused by her captors, she tried desperately in that moment actually to connect with them, calling on scripture to remind them of their connection one to another as children of God and siblings in the body of Christ. But after quoting a passage from the book of Acts, quote, from one person God made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, end quote. The jailer responded that no, it was Abraham Lincoln, not the apostle Paul who had said that, and continued the abuse. In order to carry out the brutal beatings of Hamer, her captor must have been able to look at her, to look in her eyes, and come to the conclusion that he had no need of her. In fact, as Hamer later recalled, as she was regaining consciousness after the beating, she heard her jailers talking to each other and one commenting that they could throw her in the river and no one would miss her. St. Paul, in his letter to the church at Corinth, argues that having no need of one another is a position we are simply unable to take and still call ourselves Christians. We cannot as one particular part of the larger body of Christ, say we have no need of the larger body. And we cannot, as the body of Christ, say we have no need of any one particular part. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it, St. Paul writes, and if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. This is the point Jesus' teaching in the temple is making by connecting his ministry with the prophet Isaiah's call for the people of God to, quote, bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We cannot say we have no need of the poor if we are not poor. No need of the captives if we ourselves are not captive. No need of the oppressed if we happen to find ourselves at that moment free. We cannot do any of that and call ourselves followers of Jesus. We can't do that and know anything about the liberating, healing good news of God in our own lives. It is tempting, in the face of all the suffering and injustice in the world, to quote Jesus at the wedding feast last week and ask ourselves, hey, what does any of this have to do with me? It has everything to do with you. Everything to do with me. All of it has everything to do with all of us. While having a conversation with an African-American colleague about racial justice recently, she stopped me mid-sentence and asked, why do you care? I was taken aback and unsure how to respond. What do you mean? I asked. Why do you care, Jeff? You don't have to. You're a white guy. You've got a good life. You don't have to care. So why do you? No one had asked me that before. I said something about people I love 
said something about my own experiences of knowing what it is to be hated simply for who it is God made me to be, said something about my belief that as a white male I have a particular responsibility and role to play in fighting white supremacy and racial injustice. But at the end of the day, I know that for me it comes down to this argument that St. Paul is making to that struggling little church in Corinth. Or, to quote Fannie Lou Hamer, quote, No one is free until everyone is free. It is, I know, exhausting to turn on the news or scroll through social media or show up to work or in the world as a witness and have your heart broken over and over and over and over again. I know. But what's the alternative? How else can we know the love of God but to let our hearts give and receive that love? How else can we ourselves feel the mercy of God but to extend that mercy? How else can we feel a part of the larger body of Christ or the larger still siblinghood of all the beloved children of God but to connect ourselves inextricably to the members of it? So, yes, let me be clear. Please do take good care of yourself. Remember, Sabbath is a commandment to rest, grieve, play, turn off the news for a bit, connect, create, and love with reckless abandon. Do take care. But do not give up on the world. Do not cut yourself off from the body that will break your heart. And please do not cut off members of the body in an effort to keep your heart from breaking. Let your heart break for all the John Mahoney's of this world, for all the Michelle Goes, for all the Rabbi Citron Walkers, and all of the Fannie Lou Hamers. Let your heart break because we are all one body and when one member suffers, all suffer with it. Let your heart break that you might know what it feels like to love one another as Christ loves us with a heart that has been broken wide open. Amen.